As part of the extension works on the exterior port of El Faral and adjacent to Cape Priorino Chico, Axiona is engaged in the construction of a 1,078 meter main breakwater and an 858 meter long mooring dock. Basic materials are readily available thanks to the quarry that has been created for the extracting riprap and rubble for armoring, as well as building materials produced in the crushing plant and which are subsequently used in concrete plant. But it has been thanks to the use of the world's largest floating dock, the Kugira, owned by Axiona, that it has been possible to combine and carry out an original system of construction, transport and sitting. The Kugira is made up of a central caisson 49 meters wide and 74 meters in length. The port and starboard sides have a 23 meter high wall, 5.50 meters wide, with a window at 8.3 meters from the baseline. On the central caisson and on the sides below the walls hold the dock pump chambers, located port side aft and starboard side astern. The purpose of this floating dock is the manufacture of caissons that vary according to the required specifications. The number and dimensions of the caissons to be built at any given moment depend on the design of the formwork. At this point we become fully aware of the enormity of the work that has gone into Kugira. It is a massive caisson with 56 inner cells, 24 meters in height, 66.85 meters in length and 15.65 meters in beam and weighing more than 12,000 metric tons. It took 5,000 cubic meters of concrete to fill it and more than half a million kilos of steel went into making its structure. The process begins with the mounting of the steel for the trussing of the footing on a 71 meter by 30 meter pontoon adjacent to the Kugira floating dock. The steel is delivered by a crane with a 55 meter boom and with a maximum load of 6,000 kilos. The footing placed just below the future caisson is 66.85 long, 17.65 meters wide and 0.60 meters tall. That is, one meter thick on each side of the length of the caisson. This task is carried out by 10 steel workers over four days. After this period, the pontoon is placed in the dock next to the steel. Once it is in place, the trussing for the footing is suspended from the dock's metal umbrella, leaving the pontoon free and ready to return to its initial position, where it will begin the new steel working process for the footing for the next caisson. The formwork determines the shape of the caisson, including the empty space of its internal cells. While the formwork is being set in place, the floor of the base of Kugira is coated with plastics to ensure, when the time arrives, that concrete does not stick to it. A few concrete plugs are used to separate the steel trussing. In order to introduce the trussing for the footing, it is lowered from the metallic umbrella from which it was hanging and the concrete is started to pour. This phase is carried out using two pump trucks fed by five concrete mixers that travel one behind the other, the distance of 350 meters that separate the floating dock and the concrete production center. Checks are carried out to ensure that the base of the formwork of the shaft fits snugly with the footing. 
Where openings in the formwork are detected, these are corrected to avoid concrete leaking or water coming in. Problems like these could destabilize the caisson when it is launched. The sliding system is based on three hydraulic groups made up of the following. A control center, control panel, 60-70 metric ton lifting jacks, and 60-20 metric ton braking cylinders. The system allows manual, semi-automatic and automatic sliding to be carried out. The concreting of the caisson shaft is carried out with two of Kugira's three distribution arms, which receive material from two pumps located on dry land. The concrete is poured in successive 30 cm thick layers. A team made up of 24 skilled workers by shifts and five seamen with their respective foremen and assistants pour the concrete layers at a rate of approximately 2.40 meters every 12 hours. At the same time, the 26 steel workers on each shift place the steel in each layer. Ballast is added to both the dock and the caisson to ensure that they are sunk in a balanced and proportionate way. When the sliding has reached 8 meters and 60 centimeters, several 300 millimeter tubes are put in place to communicate between the different shaft cells. This way, the caisson is divided into eight sectors so that when ballast is introduced, the caisson will remain horizontal according to the requirements of each sector. At 12 meters, it is time to place eight more tubes in the exterior screens, one for each sector, to be able to locate subsequently the valves needed for anchoring the caisson. At 17 meters, the towing hooks are put in place to allow the caisson to be towed out to sea. After the shaft has been concreted, the bollards, the handrails and the level contrail plates are set in place. Once the formwork has been cleaned and the protective nets are in place, the manufacturing process is over and the caisson is ready for launch. A total of eight working days went into these operations for building the caisson. Finally, one tug aft and another astern towed the caisson to its chosen site. When the caisson is finally sighted in its exact position, the valves are opened to fill the cells with seawater until the whole block is settled on the seabed. 